Back tonight on In Focus, Justice Raymond Zondo's appointment as uh, South Africa's top judge has been met with mixed reaction across political divides. Some political parties have rejected the appointment, while others believe he's the right fit. Let's get more reaction now with uh, DA Shadow Minister of Justice and Constitutional Development, uh, Advocate uh, Glennis Breitenbach, as well as EFF spokesperson Sinao Tambo, also joining us, speaking on behalf of uh, uh, ATM uh, tonight. Uh, we have uh, uh, Smoo. Uh, good evening and thank you very much for your time and joining us uh, tonight uh, here on, on In Focus. Clinus. Let's begin with uh, you uh, from the Democratic Alliance. It has taken a while, but finally uh, we are here where the president has announced uh, who will be taking the highest office as far as the judiciary uh, is concerned. There have been uh, issues for, of concern being raised around, for example, the fact that the Chief Justice or the Deputy Chief, Chief Justice, now Chief Justice, uh, was um, uh, left with only two and a half years in, in, in office. And, of course, uh, uh, there's been talks about how Judge Meyer performed very well during the JSC uh, process. So what's the reaction from uh, the Democratic Alliance? Uh, good evening. Thank you. Yes, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're delighted with this appointment. Uh, it's, uh, I think it was a, a sensible appointment under the circumstances. And, uh, and we warmly uh, congratulate uh, Chief Justice Zondo on his appointment. It's true that he has just, you know, two and a half years left of his tenure before he retires. Um, that's probably one of the things that weighed on the President's mind in appointing him. He, he will be available for, for this time to to bring continuity to, to the Constitutional Court, to bring some stability. It's been without uh, a permanent leader for some time now. Uh, so he's got two and a half years to put, a, put a, a stamp on the Constitutional Court, set it in a direction. And he'll have plenty of time to do that because uh, all of the matters that arise from the Zonda Commission of Inquiry, he will have to recuse himself from. So, so you know, he won't, he won't have to concern himself with those issues and he'll have plenty of time to... Uh, to spend on the administration of the court. So, all in all, I think it's a win-win. Smoo uh, Buabe from uh, the ATM, as far as uh, your party is concerned, um, you, of course, believe that there is uh, uh, some close uh, relationship between uh, the President and uh, Chief Justice Zondo. Uh, how, how do you think that affected the decision made by the President uh, to uh, appoint the Deputy Chief Justice as now the Chief Justice? Thank you, Putabo, and greetings to the viewers and my colleagues. It's a disappointing uh, decision by the president. To us, this is just a reward to Chief Justice Zondo for not implicating uh, the president in all his reports of the state capture. Despite that, a number of witnesses implicated uh, President Ramaphosa during the session of, of the commission. It's a reward as far as we are concerned, but most importantly, it's a, a grave assault to the struggles of women of this country. The opportunity presented itself to President Ramaphosa to empower someone without any grace who qualifies, who performed very well during the interviews, but the president opted to, 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 to appoint someone with only two years remaining in that court, uh, despite the fact that Judge Mandisa could have served in that court for the full 12 years as required. So we, we believe that uh, the president is not serious about uh, the total transformation of the judiciary, the future of the constitutional court, and, and, and the, 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 the agenda of women empowerment in this country. It's an insult to those women that we praise so much who contributed a lot to the struggles in this country. So it, now that in this in moment, things like this will happen by the president of the ruling party who always preach women yeah. in empowerment to that, us, that, that, even appointing Dutch Bankers as a deputy. Yes, I want, I want, I want to come this, Boo. Are, are you saying, does, does it not matter at all that uh, the president says, I intend to... Uh, nominate her as Deputy uh, Chief Justice? Well, the President to us was trying to be clever to nurse all the feelings of uh, the different sections of the society. He knows very well that uh, Chief uh, uh, Justice Mandisa performed well. Uh, a number of people felt in the country that uh, 
she should be the next chief justice. So this consolation was trying to balance the feelings of the people in society. Um, and we believe that this must be rejected. And another thing, Putabo, the president has just rendered the image of uh, the JSC um, uh, uh, useless and as a toothless uh, structure. We don't even know the reason why he overruled uh, their recommendation and why they were given this task in the yeah. first place. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, to I'm, ask I'm, some I, 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 I wanna, of abusing his yeah. power. I want to come back to that, and we'll talk a little bit more. I want you to expand on why you believe the image of uh, the, the JSC has been undermined here. But uh, let me bring in uh, Sinao Tambo now speaking for uh, the economic freedom fighters. Now, your statement saying uh, this decision is factional and uninspired and must be rejected. Why? Look, I think firstly, let us deal with the patently false uh, assertion that the appointment of Raymond Zondo, the Chief Justice, brings stability to the Constitutional Court. It does anything but that. He has two and a half years left on his term, which means after two years, another Chief Justice must be appointed. His uh, State of Capture Commission is going to be taken on review, undoubtedly, in the coming months and years, which means that he's going to have to recuse himself on a number of matters. So the suggestion that it brings stability is just foolish. But to go on as to why we think that the appointment was factional, the spokesperson of the ATM is correct. There is no material benefit the appointment of Raymond Zondo brings to the Constitutional Court other than the fact that it is a reward for him having treated Phil Ramaphosa with kid glove when he appeared at the Commission without implicating him. Secondly, it was a foolish decision to make because Raymond Zondo has exhibited himself as being someone who easily descends into the, into the political arena. We saw him when he misled his very own commission by saying he had no relationship with Jacob Zuma, which led to one of the greatest security breaches post-1994 in South Africa, which saw almost 300 lives being lost because of his arrogance and his, and his dishonesty in terms of dealing with the matter with Jacob Zuma. Secondly to that, we saw him descend into the political arena and debate with a minister who is tasked with the political affairs of society and should have an opinion on the political affairs of society. He decided to descend into that arena because of his quest for popularity, his quest for cementing himself as a political figure and a moral figure in society. He can't help himself. Without consensus of his peers, he called a press conference to debate with a minister in this country who is a political opponent of the man who just appointed him now. So in our understanding, it is unfortunate, it is a foolish appointment, it is a reward for all of the actions that Raymond Zonda has done over the past couple of years. But it's quite unfortunate. What is most painful is that uh, a female credible candidate who has exhibited her ability to be independent and her reluctance to be involved in political affairs to a point where she chooses herself when she feels like the judiciary might be perceived as biased has been excluded because Ramaphosa wants to fulfill the dreams and aspirations of his friends to sit at the highest court of the land. So it's, it's very unfortunate that the president of the Supreme Court of Appeals, Judge Meyer, who had the most brilliant performance at a forum that is constituted by elected parliamentarians and esteemed legal professions, her recommendation was set aside unjustly, irrationally, and for purposes of furthering a factional agenda of rewarding someone for not doing anything that is credible or verifiable in society. And I think it places Ramaphosa as an opponent to gender transformation in this mm -hmm. country. It places him at the center of the continued gender inequality in professions such as the legal profession in this right. instance. Now, now, and he must be condemned by history for that. So now, are you going to challenge this? I mean, previous uh, presidential appointments, for example, at the NDPP, uh, were taken to court uh, and, and, and challenged and uh, uh, taken for review. Are you going to do such an action? Yes, the ESF is going to explore its legal options in that regard and proceed as it sees fit. But primarily right now, we must be able to expose to society that Ramaphosa has made an irrational decision. So he has mistaken his discretion for sovereign power of making a decision in that nature. The Judicial Service Commission, in its majority, recommended Judge President Maya to be the Constitutional Court Chief Justice. He set that aside. He consulted with political parties to be able to get a sense as to what does the political terrain, which is a duly elected people who, who represent our democracy, who suggested who must be appointed as the chief justice. So he must disclose more than what he has done now. He must disclose that what did the leaders of the political parties in parliament suggest? And is his decision 
based on a rational basis, or is it something that is a reward for someone who has auditioned for this role over the past couple of years, convert himself? I mean, just now, he has uh, released a statement congratulating himself in his capacity as an acting chief justice, congratulating himself on his appointment. I mean, what type of narcissism is that? That is the type of person we are dealing with, a self-obsessed individual who thinks of himself as a political figure that must be influential in society. And that's what we must be able to get across. Before anything of considerations of how we're going to take a step forward, society must know that a self-obsessed narcissist has been appointed as a chief justice of South Africa. We take a break. We'll continue. Advocate Glennis Brayton Bach, DA uh, representative, as well as EFF spokesperson Snell Tumble, as well as uh, uh, with us uh, tonight, uh, Smooth Mwari uh, from ATM. Uh, in Focus continues shortly. Back here live tonight on In Focus, News of Africa, Channel 405. More reaction tonight to the appointment of uh, Raymond Zondo as uh, the Chief Justice uh, of South Africa. Advocate uh, Brayton Bach. Uh, what does this mean for the relationship between the president and the JSC uh, going forward? Many are arguing that uh, the president said to these guys, well, conduct interviews. They conducted interviews on the floor. They gave him the recommendation, and he just flat out ignored their recommendation, in a sense undermining the authority of this institution. Uh, yeah, well, look, I, d I don't agree with that statement on any level. Uh, the president asked the JSC to advise him on the suitability of the candidates. The JSC conducted interviews. In my view, the JSC was required, and I sit on the JSC, in my view, the JSC was required to conduct interviews, assess the suitability of the candidates, and uh, advise the president whether or not candidates were suitable or not. Uh, there's nothing in the Constitution, and there was nothing in the, uh, in the request from the president to suggest that he wanted us to make a recommendation as to who is most suitable. That's his discretion. Uh, and I think that uh, I hold the view that, that the president was entitled to exercise his discretion. All he needed from us as the JSC was all the candidates are suitable or none of the candidates are suitable or some of the candidates are suitable. He didn't need us to rank and, 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 uh, and, and uh, nominate a candidate. I think uh, that that was unnecessary. And I don't, I don't think he was ever bound by it. So I don't think he's ignored the JSC. I think uh, he probably uh, took into account that we found them more to be suitable candidates. And he consulted with him, so ever he consulted, and he's applied his mind and exercised his discretion. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So you're saying the, the, the decision by the JSC to recommend one uh, judge was unnecessary, and therefore they went beyond what the president had asked them to do? Well, in my view, yes, we went beyond what we were required to do, and all we were required to do was to interview the candidates and assess whether they were suitable or not suitable. And as far as uh, the JSC is concerned, and uh, were all four suitable? Were all four appointable? Certainly. Even with, with the view held by some party, others are saying uh, uh, Justice Raymond Zondo is a self-obsessed narcissist uh, from the economic freedom fighters' point of view. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, take it from whence it comes. Um, yeah, everyone's entitled, I suppose, to their opinion. This is a democracy. Uh, I certainly don't hold that view, and neither does my party. Yeah. And where does your party stand on the fact that uh, just, Justice Maya was, was overlooked as a possible female justice? Justice Maya um, performed very well in her interview. She is obviously a very competent judge. She has a stellar uh, judicial career, a stellar law career. Uh, she is a, a very good leader of the Supreme Court of Appeal. And uh, Justice Maya herself said during the interview, it's a view with, with which I uh, agree very strongly, uh, Justice Maya herself said in her interview that women do not need a, a step up, thank you very much, from anybody. They're perfectly capable of competing with anybody on an equal footing, and they don't need any favors just because they're women. So Ju Judge Maya, President Maya, would be the very last person who would wish to be uh, receive special treatment simply because she's a woman. Uh, and so um, I don't believe that she will have any qualms with what has taken place here, and uh, she, she will be the uh, Deputy Chief Justice, a, a very high position in our country's judicial system, and she's on a, on, you know, stands a very good chance of being, you know, considered for the position of Chief Justice when uh, Chief Justice Zonda retires. But 
Uh, she made it very clear, and it's, it's, a, it's a, a view that I agree with 100%. Women do not need any special treatment. They don't need the inside track. They're perfectly capable of competing with anybody, anytime, any place. Sbu, what is uh, your take then on how this undermines the JSE, but also how does it complicate the relationship then going forward between uh, the president and, and, and the JSE, but also, uh, I suppose, uh, generally, uh, also I'm asking myself, uh, the Chief Justice uh, would uh, certainly be going to be now chair of the JSE uh, in a group of people that clearly did not vote for him or did not see him uh, in that position. Well, uh, as I've said earlier on, Butabo, the president has complicated the relationship between himself and, uh, and the JSC. If the president wanted to appoint Chief Justice Zondo, he should have done what he did now to recommend one name and give it to the JSC. Because as far as I understand, the same name of um, uh, Judge Mandisa will have to go through the JSC. Uh, though it's a one name recommended by him. He should have done that rather than recommending or nominating about four people knowing exactly what he wants. And I think going forward, really, as we have said, uh, the new Chief Justice now will have to sit even in the interviews of some of the people who are the candidates with him. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a good thing going forward. The president had the right and an opportunity to clarify things and make life easier even for himself. But what he has done now, seriously, we can use all fancy ways to defend him. But this appointment is hopeless. There's no way to defend it. Uh, it's an embarrassment to the structures of women, as I've said. Yes, they don't need to be uh, appointed or recommended just because they are women. And I think it's exactly what Judge Mandis has said. But we've got someone who qualifies at all levels, who's got experience, who's got uh, uh, the, the age on his side as well. But you tend to go to someone who's got only two years. What can you do in the structure like Concord in the period of two years? This judge, uh, judge uh, Zondo, has been requesting for many extensions even in that um, commission. Now we are giving him two years to turn around the courts. It's not going to be possible. There is a candidate who can do this thing in the period of 12 years. Uh, we think the, the president really has missed the opportunity. So now, uh, just weighing on the uh, uh, debate around the JSC going beyond the bounds of what it was expected to do, really, it was supposed to speak on the appointability of all four and not just uh, recommend one. Look, there's no stipulation that says that. I mean, the JSC, in its own wisdom, in a majority, and I think that's something we must emphasize, that in its majority, it reached that conclusion. So there's a perception or there's a narrative that is being pushed that the JSC has overstepped it. So the JSC, in its wisdom, made that decision in consideration with what guided and the prescripts that underpin it. So there's no, there's no rationality to that. And I think it's, it's rather disappointing that... What is becoming uh, quite prevalent is that the Democratic Alliance has abdicated its responsibility as an opposition in this country and just seems to, to rubber stamp anything that Cyril Ramaphosa does. I mean, the decision by Cyril Ramaphosa to appoint Chief Justice, as much as it might be provocative, must be rational. So the conversation must be having right now is well this decision is rational. If we're going to have a political debate around the appointment of Raymond Zondi as the Chief Justice, let's go through the interviews. Who was the best performing candidate? Who was the least performing candidate? Objectively, what, what, what material value does one add if, if you have a candidate that can go the, the full 12 year term to turn around our courts and an individual who's been part and parcel of our courts for over 10 years and only has two years left? Let's have an objective discussion about the qualitative appointment of the Chief Justice into the Concord. And is Raymond Zon the such a candidate? And we think not. And I don't think we're being objective in this case because there's some sentimentality about him doing some uh, prolific sacrifice of presiding over the state of capture commission as if it's a risk that someone forced him into. No one put a bullet into his head to do that. And if that has prejudiced him or has revealed him to be someone who descends into the political arena too easily, then so be it. We're able to see that such an individual is not suitable to sit at that level of an office. Yeah. So that's the position that we have. And the JSC, in its wisdom, 
constituted by various parliamentarians, such as Advocate Britain Park herself, constituted by members of the legal profession, made a decision in its majority, made a recommendation in its majority that this is the candidate that performed the best amongst all of those. I mean, even if we were to rank them objectively at a political level, I don't think that uh, Raymond Zonda even comes second in terms of performance as an individual. He has extremely poor interviews. I mean, he was there saying he doesn't know things. The same uh, logic or reasons that he was attacking people at his commission, he was sitting there mumbling and waffling, saying he doesn't remember, he doesn't know, because he knew that he had compromised himself by having met the former president, Jacob Zuma, on two occasions, yet seemingly can't remember those details. He knew that he had compromised himself but by breaching the consensus reached with other judges in terms of responding to Mr. Lindo as and calling a press conference instead of issuing a statement. He has been on a permanent campaign, and we must make an objective analysis yeah. on his appointment. Not, so, not some sentimentality. Yeah. So, so now, some arguing that uh, that display, which you're criticizing right now, shows a, a man who is um, prepared to put his neck on the line in uh, the protection of our constitution. I think it reveals someone who can't take criticism. I think it, it reveals someone who is very fragile, who wants, who, who considers his public reputation or public appeal over and above the integrity of the judiciary. Because a, a person who's supposed to maintain or sustain justice in society shouldn't be a divisive figure. And that's what Raymond Zondo has become by his, his, his insistence of descending into political affairs where he could rather keep quiet or get someone else or even issue a statement if it must come to a level of actually interacting with general political critique, which is allowed in this country. I mean, the judiciary, the constitution of this country is born out of debate. It was born out of contesting ideas. It was born out of a round table of discussions from people from different political backgrounds who critiqued each other, who didn't like each other per se, but were able to engage in a meaningful interaction to be able to craft our legal system. That is what Minister Linda Susumu was doing, for example, but he took affront to that. And someone who's so fragile, who thinks that they must come out into the public and now become a hero and project themselves as this hero of the judiciary who's going to stand against all political critique, what is he going to do if he doesn't like what I'm saying right now in this interview? Is he going to call a, a press conference? I'm a member of parliament. I'm someone who sits in an institution that is a part of the arms of the state. Is he going to respond to every single critique that is raised in the constitutional court now that he sits as the head of it? Are we unable to have honest discussions or reflections about the nature of our judiciary because someone who sits at the head of our judiciary right now is a fragile narcissist? Mm. I think it's something that we're not able to call out. All right. Advocate Clarence Breitenbach, from I mean, what you're listening to and listening to the political parties, the attack that has been on the judiciary clearly is not about to stop because of uh, uh, this appointment. Well, no, it's, it's not going to stop, uh, and I don't think anyone expects it to stop. And quite correctly, as pointed out by the previous speaker, uh, South Africa is a country of debate and robust debate. Uh, and everybody uh, must be able to stand up to that robust debate. And I don't think that uh, the new Chief Justice stands back from robust debate. I don't think he thinks he's above criticism. I've never formed that view. Uh, he's an experienced jurist. Uh, he brings a lot of experience on many benches to, to the Constitutional Court, and uh, uh, I certainly have not formed the view that he's a narcissist. So everyone's entitled to their own opinion, and, uh, and, and, and we don't share that view. Yeah. Have you formed a view about his performance uh, during the interviews? Do you think he was the best in terms of performance in that interview? I don't think it's appropriate for me to comment on who I think was the best in the interview. The, the Judicial Services Commission uh, did what they did, and they recommended who they recommended, and uh, and the president has exercised his discretion. I, I really don't think it's appropriate for me to to say who I think was best and who I think was worst. Zbu, so, are you going to take this decision uh, by the president, which you say is irrational, uh, on review? Are you going to take any legal action about it? Well, for now, we are not uh, intending to take any legal route in this matter. We'll continue to observe the developments, but we are, as a party, rejecting it as upset as a hopeless and a fictional decision by the president, fictional appointment. It's a reward, uh, and, and on the side of a judgment, this is a consolation, which we don't believe he should take. it. should just turn down because uh, the president is being uh, um, playing a total game here. As a party, we will continue to observe this development, but it's, uh, 
One of the reasons that shows that the ATM is correct when it says President Ramaphosa can't lead us any further is a shame. He's saying that he's a failing president. We can't accommodate him any further. Uh, that is why we continue with our vote of no confidence. Um, because we are going, going, going down the train with the man in the driving seat. I appreciate your time. Advocate Glennis Breitenbach, thanks for coming on. And uh, it's now Tambo there uh, joining us also on the line.